we as a society, we are part of the being in the forefront was prevention of uh, cervical cancer, amongst other preventable gynecological cancers, including treatment and management of gynecological cancers. We, our, our aim is to involve, our aim and our involvement is with the Ministry of Health, especially in the technical working groups of the National Cancer Control Program, whereby we have participated in the formulation of guidelines and also uh, formulating management uh, guidelines for gynecological malignancies, mainly the reproductive uh, tract cancers. So in the, with regards to today, we are aware that cervical cancer is one of the major causes of mortality among women in this country, much as it is the second uh, after breast, but it is leading in terms of mortality with more than close to 6,000 uh, diagnoses in a year and uh, 3,000 deaths. Most of these women come to us late, which means that uh, they have advanced disease, and they, which is not amenable to, to surgical intervention, so we end up with uh, uh, chemotherapy and radiation, radiation therapy. So we, as a society, and in, with regards to this uh, ceremony today, we have to plug into the WHO strategy of cervical cancer elimination, which means 90% of our girls vaccinated and 70% screened with a high performance test. And in this case, the use of uh, HPV DNA screening as an entry point towards uh, screening and prevention of cervical cancer. We should also not forget that those who test positive, I mean, HPV DNA positive should also be linked to proper care in this case, they should be linked to a col uh, some diagnostic procedure known as uh, colposcopy. So this is really welcome in that it will be part of the armamentarium towards uh, prevention of cervical cancer by detecting the, the causative organisms, which is the human papilloma virus. We must have, uh, battle against cancer cannot be worn downstream. It must be worn upstream. And we must have the, the, the public health approach towards uh, management of, uh, and prevention. In, in that kind of the one shoe fits all. And we believe that self-sampling is in line with the national self-care guide, self guidelines, which means that uh, if we are empower our population that we have a self-care guidelines in place, this could be part of uh, the self-care that women can uh, adopt and to, this will ramp up kind of the, the screening and uh, the diagnosis of uh, those who may be at risk of developing uh, cervical cancer. Yeah, the call to action is that cervical cancer is preventable. It's preventable not just by the healthcare provider, but also the population of women taking charge of their own uh, life and of their own health. And that's why I keep stressing, taking charge of your own health and your own life also includes ability to do self-sampling and uh, at the comfort of your home, at the comfort of your office, or at the comfort of, uh, of, of any other place that you are comfortable with and have these this, uh, uh, specimens uh, taken to the lab and you get the results really mailed to you or through other means you are able to be managed after the results are, are received. As a ministry and as a country, we should now cascade this to the lowest level of healthcare facilities. That woman who is in the far-flung areas, hard-to-reach areas, should also be able to benefit from such initiatives as self-sampling. <music>